Your number three ranked University of St. Francis football team kicked off the 2019 campaign in glorious fashion with a 56-6 win at USF Illinois. The Cougs scored early and often, and the defense did not surrender a point till the waning moments of the game. Coach D was happy with the start of the season. Yeah, I, I was. I, I thought we played fast and we played hard. I thought we executed extremely well uh, offensively. I thought we controlled the line of scrimmage. We gave our quarterback time to throw. Um, and uh, Matt Crable was uh, on, he was accurate, he made uh, great throws. And we have an outstanding receiving core. Rocky James had a great game. First play from scrimmage, touchdown. Um, and it just continued. I think we had nine different receivers catch footballs and six of those multiple catches. So we're spreading the ball around because we, you know, we've got good players. And um, that's a big deal. I mean, you, you can't take, take it all away. Um, we've just got to continue to prove our, our, uh, improve our execution. Defensively, uh, you know, I think the big question mark going into it was uh, our level two linebacking, linebackers. And I thought we performed admirably. Uh, we tackled well, we fit the run well, uh, made plays on, on passes. Um, our defensive line is strong. Uh, Swartz and Janicic kind of lead the pack. And they're outstanding football players. Secondary did a great job, you know, keeping the ball in front and, and making plays. So, you know, it was a great day for us. Um, you know, I expect to keep improving as the competition gets tougher and tougher each week. It'll be hard to improve upon one play, one touchdown. And the Cougs did that twice. Matt Crable touchdown passes to Rocky James and Duke Blackwell opened the first and third quarters. You don't see that very often. Somebody asked me that. I, I coached a lot of games, so I'm not quite sure. Uh, probably not. You know, actually it was the same play, same hash mark, different receiver. Number one was covered, went to number two. So um, it, it was unique, yet uh, it was pretty cool, you know, that uh, our guys went out and executed things. and. Uh, even though the second rep in the first in the second half was a bit different in coverage, we went to the next progression and still got the score. Running back PJ Dean did not see the end zone, but he did lead USF with 99 all-purpose yards, while averaging 7.3 yards per carry. You know, I, I'm so pleased with him. I think he's a wonderful young man, and uh, you know, he had. Uh, major knee surgery and, and missed a year. So coming back after that, working himself back into condition, strengthening that knee, uh, says a lot for him. You know, and, and our opponent uh, was crowd in the box. They were gonna take away the run, so you're making it difficult to run the football, yet we found a way. And, uh, again, credit to our offensive line, and, and PJ's just a playmaker. On defense, Nick Lucas was playmaking leading the team with 10 tackles. And right behind him was true freshman Nate Place, making plays with nine tackles. Well, Place was an outstanding high school quarterback, but he had um, physical skills. He, I mean, he could run, he had size, he was a tough guy. And we needed help and safety. So when we came in, said, you know, you're gonna be on defense. He said, whatever is best for the team. And he, and he did just that. And uh, boy, he has been a tremendous addition to that secondary and gives us a lot of strength. And man, he came up and made some big hits. Nick Lucas is, uh, I, I thought was gonna be a great football player and now it's his time. And uh, boy, he, he performed extremely well. If um, you, know, you were to compare him and Eric Dunton, kind of look alike out there making plays. Lucas is a redshirt sophomore and came into the program backing up Cougar great Spencer Coward before moving to middle linebacker. A freshman year I came in here and I actually was playing Sam, so I was playing behind Spence. And uh, I, watching him play was, was awesome and then I was, I was super excited, super hungry and then I got bummed with the shoulder injury. So I was out for the whole year after that, but I was still obviously watching Spence play and obviously taking peeks at Harness and Dunn all the time too. For my second year here, once again I was playing a little bit of Sam, but 
always speaking in that at Harness and Dunn all the time. And what really stuck to me was just how, how fast and how physical the guys were, even after, if, if they were to slip up on one play, they're, they're right back on at the very next one. And they just were just physical players. Dunn himself, I, I like to, I like to kind of picture my game as, as his game because I feel like that's the dude I could most relate with and, and everything like that. So watching him with all his hard work, I talk to him all the time about football. And that was just one guy that I realized hard work does pay off because he came in here and he was, he was a tiny dude and now he's just Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? So I, it, it was just nice to see his hard work and that's how I try to you know, position myself too. All-American Eric Dunton played his sophomore year weighing 205 pounds, same as Lucas. So what Nick lacks in size, he makes up for with his speed and versatility, just like he did playing at Lake Central High School, where he was known as a hybrid defender. Dusting off the yearbook. Um, well, back, back, back in high school, like you said, a, a hybrid position is the best way to put it because I, some games I'll be playing linebacker. One game I remember they wanted me to play corner, I didn't end up doing it. But then going to the D-line, everything like that, and, I, and I, I enjoyed that because it gave me more knowledge of all the different, all the different positions. So even, even here, I started off playing, playing Sam, so I know all the secondary coverages, I know what everybody's supposed to do. So when I'm playing linebacker now, when I hear the calls from the bandit or the free or what have you, I know what they're doing, so I know how to kind of you know, with, with my drops or with my run fit, I know what, what they're supposed to do, so it helps me out and help me do my job better too. And defensively, it was a good job all around. The Cougs recorded five sacks and forced five fumbles with three fumble recoveries. Well, I, it's definitely exciting because it's, it's something where we've been practicing all, all summer long for and then the, the whole two-a-day grind, it was, it was just really amazing to see us all put it together on the field that last Two Saturdays ago, two Saturdays ago now, but uh, basically it's not—it's not about me, it's about we. So that th was just nice to see everybody flying around, defensive line making moves, and everybody just making moves in general. Nothing necessarily stuck out as the surprising factor because this is all things that we expected to happen. Uh, but I would say one thing that I'm proud of most certainly is just the speed that we played at. It was—it was just great to see. I mean, we do pursuit drills day and night here at practice, so it's just great to see that translate over to a game where everybody's flying to the ball, all 11 guys around the ball every single time. So that, that was nice to see. And it was nice for Nick to see his high school teammate, Jackson Long, fly through the line for a minus five yard tackle for loss. They both bring a lot of energy and it's contagious. I mean, going back to the high school days with our relationship, what you see now has been the same thing. It just continued to get better and better with our relationship. We've always, I mean, in high school, we always focus on just playing with energy and playing with passion. Because when you, as a defensive player, when you play with energy and passion, the offensive people hate to see that. When after you make a big play and everybody's just going insane, that that's just contagious as a, as a defensive unit. So uh, with that, and, I, and speaking of his big play at USF uh, Illinois, that was that was fantastic to see. And unfortunately, I wasn't on the field with him, so I couldn't celebrate. But I, when he got on the sideline, I was able to give him a couple high fives. It's great to see the player that he's become, and I'm sure he's going to continue to get better and better. And that's the goal. And this Saturday, the Cougs travel to take on a Robert Morris team that is one and one on the season. The Eagle had a convincing 31-14 win over Taylor and last week lost at Siena Heights 6-0. It'll be a good test for USF. It will be a real test. Uh, Siena Heights is one of the, the strongest defenses in NAI football. They're loaded, they're big, they have size, they run well, they can cover. Uh, obviously they stop the run well. The tailback for Robert Morris is an outstanding football player. And that's going to be the biggest challenge for our defense. We've got to wrap him up and tackle him because he can make plays. Uh, at the same time, you know, they've got a quarterback um, who's uh, thrown the ball uh, well, particularly in game one. So, um, you know, we've got our work cut out for us there. Confidence is always going to be an all-time high. Respect all, fear none. That's what we preach here. But Robert Morris, they're obviously, like you said, super good, super good football team. Offensively, I'd say they're a little bit more complex than what we usually see. They come out in about a gazillion formations and, and they do a lot of misdirection things and stuff like that. But the biggest thing we have to key on is obviously the running back because at one second you'll see him and then he'll be 50 yards away on the other side of the field. So I'd say that's one thing that we really have to key, on, key in on and just really focus in the film room. And I think we'll be just fine. Okay. Um, was there anything else that I didn't touch on that you wanted to add? Go Cougs. <laughs>